Well, how you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at The Suicide Squad, written and directed by James Gunn and starring Margot Robbie, Idris Elba, and John Cena. The infamous Suicide Squad are once again called into action to the small island nation of Corto Maltese, where a military coup has thrown the nation into chaos. But they don't really care about that. What they're really after is a military facility which houses Project Starfish, a very powerful weapon. And on the surface, this is your standard superhero plot. There's a thing, the bad guys want the thing, and the good guys have to get to the thing before the bad guys can get to the thing and do bad things with the thing. Except this time around, the good guys aren't really the good guys, they're just the better guys. Arguably. The Suicide Squad is sort of a sequel to David Ayer's article-less Suicide Squad, although I'm not really sure we should call it David Ayer's Suicide Squad, because the movie we got is not really the movie Ayer made. WB took the movie he made and tried to turn it into their own version of Guardians of the Galaxy at great expense and at the last minute. The end result was about two-thirds of a somewhat coherent movie and one-third of an absolute mess. And I really do not want to see this turn into another release the Snyder Cut, because we do not need that shit again. But I will admit there is a part of me that is kind of curious what movie Ayer actually made. And the situation is a little different here, because Snyder left his movie before it was completed, for understandable reasons, mind you, while Ayer's movie, as I understand it, was basically done. It's just WB looked at the response from the trailer and realized the trailer was not the movie they made, so they had to scramble at the last minute to change it into that movie, and really did not succeed. So there is a part of me that wants to see it just out of curiosity, but there's another part of me that is pretty sure it's still not going to be a good movie, just a less messy one. But anyway, on to The Suicide Squad. Returning for this movie are Harley Quinn, Colonel Flagg, Amanda Waller, and Captain Boomerang, briefly, new to this movie are a host of anti-heroes. You got Peacemaker, played by John Cena, an extremely efficient killer who loves peace and will kill as many people as it takes to achieve it. No self-awareness, that one. You have Polka Dot Man, played by David Dastmalkian, and I may very well be saying that wrong. That guy has some serious mommy issues. And he throws polka dots. I assure you it's more dangerous than it sounds. We have Ratcatcher 2, played by Daniela Melchio. She is the daughter of the original Ratcatcher, who is played by Taika Waititi in a couple of flashbacks, and she controls rats. Again, it's more dangerous than it sounds. You got King Shark, who is voiced by Sylvester Stallone, of all people. He is a huge friggin' half-man, half-shark. And kinda dumb. And we have the assassin known as Bloodsport, played by Idris Elba. He is here because Will Smith decided not to come back and play Deadshot again. And they are not doing a very good job of hiding the fact that this character was originally supposed to be Deadshot. I mean, he's a highly skilled assassin, he's got a daughter he's trying to help out, I mean, it's basically the same character. It does seem rather fitting that James Gunn would end up making this movie, considering Warner Brothers clearly wanted to make their own James Gunn movie the last time, they just didn't have James Gunn. But thanks to that whole non traversy that briefly got him fired from Guardians of the Galaxy, this time they got him. And this is James Gunn without restraints. WB pretty much just handed him the reins and told him to go nuts, and by God he did. If you've seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, then you already have a pretty good idea of what James Gunn likes to do with superheroes and how his sense of humor works. And most of that is here as well, except unlike Gunn working for Marvel Studios, he had permission to go for the hard R. The end result is very funny and also very gory. So many people are getting shot and stabbed and dismembered and blown up and turned into marinara. One might call it a tad excessive, if you wanted to downplay how excessive it was. And Gunn is very good at using gratuitous violence in humorous ways. There is a very good scene where Bloodsport and Peacemaker are killing off a bunch of enemy combatants and trying to constantly outdo each other on how good they are at killing. And at the end of it, Bloodsport's like, no one likes a show off. And Peacemaker says, unless what they're showing off is dope as fuck. And Bloodsport's like, ah, 
He's got me there. And while there is a lot of humor in the movie, there is also some stuff that is genuinely horrifying, especially when they get to the part of the movie where they finally reveal what Project Starfish actually is and what they've been doing with it. I mean, there is some unsettling shit there. And as Gunn pointed out in an interview, they did not give him any restraints as far as who had to live and who could be killed off. So just be prepared for that. There may be some characters that survive you don't expect. There may be some characters who do not survive that you did not expect. The cast in this movie is fantastic. Even Joel Kinnaman was good, and I never thought the day would come when I would actually see a movie and think, well, Joel Kinnaman was really good in that. The man is normally a charismatic black hole. Like, he actually has anti-charisma. If he's around a very charismatic person, he will actually suck the charisma away from that person and somehow make them boring. Like, that's how bad he is. Viola Davis is back as Amanda Waller, and man, she is an evil, cold-hearted, Bitch. She is really good in that role. Almost a little too good. That woman scares me sometimes. Idris Elba is as good as he always is, even though he's playing not Deadshot. Cena gets a chance to show off his comedic chops, and I really like the rivalry between him and Bloodsport. Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn was one of the few bright spots in the first Suicide Squad movie, and she's still kicking ass here. And they actually got her a decent costume this time. It looks like a Harley Quinn costume. Thank you. Too bad she only wears it for like half the movie. For the second half, she's in a dress. But to be fair, it is a nice dress. Melchio's Ratcatcher 2 was kind of the more innocent member of the team. If the Suicide Squad has a good guy, it would be her. She and Elba play off each other pretty well. He becomes almost like a surrogate father to her, even though he is very much not a fan of rats. She also sort of becomes like the King Shark Whisperer, which was pretty funny. Her pet rat Sebastian is adorable, and while there is a lot of CGI going on in there, they did use some live rats as stand-ins, and apparently one of them, according to the credits, is named Crisp Rat. Crisp Rat. I'm not sure if I want to laugh at that, or punch whoever came up with that in the face. Maybe both. And as I mentioned before, we have Sly as the voice of King Shark. I don't know how he got that job, but God bless him. It's a very different King Shark from what I'm used to. Uh, the one I've seen most recently was the one from the Harley Quinn animated series, who is considerably more intelligent than the one in this movie. King Shark also shows up now and then in the Arrowverse, and even that one is more intelligent than the movie version. Basically, this King Shark is the Groot of the group, except he's much more violent and has a slightly better vocabulary. And he was a lot of fun, but the whole time I'm watching the movie, I had trouble seeing him as anything other than the Groot. I mean, that was his role. The action sequences are very well done, they are fun to watch, they are incredibly violent, often a bit silly. There's one sequence where Harley is escaping captivity to the tune of Louis Prima's Just a Gigolo, which is a treat to watch. And the big fight at the end is exactly as insane as I expected it to be. The only thing I didn't really care for was the power struggle going on with the new Corto Maltesian government and the rebels, which Harley somehow gets tangled up in. I think we could have used a bit less of that because it kind of slowed the movie down, and I just really did not care about it because the movie didn't really give me a reason to. Overall, it's silly, it's violent, it's James Gunn at his James Gunniest, and I enjoyed it very much. Certainly enjoyed it more than the first Suicide Squad. This is one of those rare occasions where I would say, yes, this is worth the price of an HBO Max subscription, because then you can see it without leaving your house. But if you have to leave the house, and you can do so safely, it's also worth seeing on the big screen. And that's all I have to say about the Suicide Squad. Till next time, take care.